Okay. So get comfy. Get your just sit comfortable. I'm um, just thinking for this 30 minutes, we're going to do this little meditation, this little kind of thinking, uh, sowing these seeds in our mind to, you know, develop our marvellous potential so we can be a benefit to ourselves and to others. So, you know, these Buddhas, there's different kinds of Buddhas, and Buddha just think of it as an idealised an idealized version of ourself, really. It's kind of the best, the best aspect of ourself, Buddha. And there's all these different ones, you know, uh, male, female, some represent, some are peaceful, some are kind of wrathful ones, some are, some, they all represent different psychological qualities. So this Tara, she, you know, this particular one, she represents, I mean, these forms are very ancient. They're kind of coming back from India, 3,000 years or something, 2,500 years old. But they, um, or whatever, maybe less than that, I don't know. But they, they all, it's really the psychology, you know, it might be surprising to us because it's not what we think of psychology. But each of them is like an S, is, is a manifestation of a particular psychological quality that we're trying to cultivate. So this one of Tara, you know, they talk about an enlightened being, a being who's fully developed, got three essential qualities. Um, one is kind of wisdom. Well, first, compassion. Say compassion. This empathy, this complete break, a completely broken down barrier, no barriers between self and other. When we rid our own mind of all the rubbish, you know, we've only got a connection with others. Like our, a sense of self is like it almost includes others. There's no barrier. This would be very amazing, wouldn't it? This is compassion. This is empathy. But it's also very active, you know. But then you've got, so you, you've got the compassion, the wish to benefit others. Then you've got to have the wisdom to do so, the wisdom to know how. And that's represented, so this compassion, as we know, is, is represented by the one particular Buddha, compassion. And the other one is wisdom. So wisdom, you get wisdom. We don't have much wisdom when we're caught up in our own misery. That's where it's surprising. When you hear the word wisdom, the way you get wisdom is by giving up the rubbish, by giving up attachment and fears and anger and self-centeredness, because that makes you very narrow. It makes us very uncompassionate. It makes us very overwhelmed by our own misery. You know, we don't want that. So wisdom comes, clarity that enables us to see how to benefit others. So compassion is the wish to benefit. But that's not enough. You need the wisdom to know how. And that can only come when your own mind has kind of got rid of all the nonsense so you can see things crystal clear, see other people exactly how to help them. But then you have the third one, which is the ability to do so. They call that power. So you've got to have compassion, the wish to benefit, the wisdom to know how, and the power to do so, the ability to do so. So that's manifest, that's represented by this Buddha Tara. It's female, honest, often it's like action energy, get things done make things happen, be successful. <clears throat> it's almost like courage as well and confidence, you know. That's Tara. So, of course, it's personified in these kind of ancient forms. But when you get the meaning, it's very, very direct. It's very real. It's very personal. It's very, it's very direct. So imagine in front of us the, the kind of the manifestation of this quality depicted as this particular Buddha, Tara. She's known as the liberator from all the fears, you know. So she's green light body in front of the sky. Do your best, just imagine. Green light body, action energy. And you see in the pictures and the statues, you know, very beautiful, radiant light sitting on a multicolored lotus. As all this is like a visual language. So not maybe a language we don't know, so we learn it, you know. Because if it is about the mind, and it doesn't matter how old it is, it's still universal, isn't it? <clears throat> so she's radiantly, a radiant light body, very beautiful, radiant green. She's sitting cross-legged on a multicolored lotus. Actually, no, she's her left leg is sitting like in like in meditation, but her right leg is sitting, relaxing on another, resting on another little multicolored lotus. She's in this kind of action pose, ready to hop up to help sentient beings. You know, it's action energy. Radiant light, very beautiful face, totally gorgeous, utterly beautiful. And hair, you know, you see on her hair like this <clears throat> partially held up in a top knot, very beautiful. It's tiara on her head sort of thing, five-pointed crown. 
And then you see in this Indian style, you know, this dress beautifully with decoration on her upper arm, jewelry, you know, like a throat, upper arms, wrists, ankles, rainbow kind of colored clothes, the lower part of her body, but her upper part of her body, she's really got nothing on at all. She's got these gorgeous breasts, you know, kind of very radiant, very beautiful, totally gorgeous. Should lift, lift us. And think of it as a mirror image of our own potential. She has all the qualities like compassion, wisdom, but the aspect she shows is this power, energy, action, success, cut through the obstacles, make things happen, confidence. And we all need that, don't we? I mean, you can have an awful lot of compassion. You can even have wisdom, but if you haven't got the ability to put things together, to make it happen, you're pretty useless, you know? So this is her energy. So if you're familiar with the image, fine. If not, that's okay. Just kind of imagine this energy in front, depicted as female. She's got, she's got her, her right hand is on her right knee. Her fingers are pointing up, upwards, a palm up, and the fingers pointing open, it's open palm. So it's like a very generous giving kind of gesture, you know. And between her thumb and ring finger, she's holding the stem of a blue lotus flower, like a blue upala flower that blooms around about her right ear. And her left hand is fingers at her heart upright, her hand at her heart, fingers upright in this mudra or gesture, um, fingers upright. And then thumb and ring finger holding the stem of another blue upala flower that blooms around about her left ear. And just everything's beautiful, radiant, light, not substantial like a statue. And the meaning is the point, the meaning. She has all these qualities of perfection, goodness, wisdom, compassion, but this is action, power, action, get things done, cut through the obstacles, make things happen. So if we have a spiritual teacher, a lama, these words, you know, it makes it, it's helpful to think that this is the manifestation of their mind, manifesting like this to help us become like this ourselves. So imagine from her brow, she sends these radiant beams of white light, laser beams of white light that enter into our brow and fill us completely, eradicating all the pain and suffering and misery of our bodies, you know, and all the, and sort of think of also, also the karmic imprints of all the harm we've done with our bodies to help to suffer, to cause sentient being suffering in this life and countless past lives, whatever we've done to harm others with our bodies, all eliminated by this radiant white light filling us. Imagine this so happily. As we say her mantra a few times, we can sing it a few times and say it silently as all this radiant white light fills us, purifying all our sickness and physical misery and purifying all the imprints of the harm we've ever done to harm sentient beings with our bodies. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. 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 Full of this radiant white light, our body totally purified, all the pain gone. And all the imprints of all the harm we've done to sentient beings, completely gone. Now you can imagine the white light coming again, this time filling us with the marvelous potential for this body to only benefit others. Can you imagine on the planet 
if this were like it is for everybody. But ourselves, think now ourselves, only possible to benefit others. Whoever sees us, touches us, smells us, tastes us, hears us, they can only be benefited by our body. Thinking, imagine only benefiting others with our body. How incredible. And of course, the way the Buddhism would describe when we're fully developed as Buddhas, we can only be, we, we can manifest in countless bodies to benefit countless suffering sentient beings. Imagine fully this marvelous potential, this white light. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. 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 Imagine this. Om tare. Continue to imagine. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. 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 Um tare to tare to re swaha. Full of this white light, full of this marvelous potential to only be able to benefit others with our body. Can you imagine? And now Lama Damatara so compassionately sends from her throat radiant laser beams of red light that penetrate our throat and fill us completely. This time purifying all the nonsense of our speech, you know, all the harsh speech, the rabbiting on about nothing speech, bad mouthing behind backs, all the speech that isn't true. Even our speculating, you know, we don't mean to say things that aren't true, but we often so eager to think to, to, to say the right thing. We don't even know if we're right and we mislead people. Even to something as simple as, you know, what time is that shop open, Rabina? Oh, four o'clock. Are you sure? Yes. And then you realize it's not, and then someone goes there and it's not open. Oh, I thought it was. So we're too eager to speak, you know, so we mislead people un, un, unwittingly. So speech needs to be really beneficial. So then imagine purifying all this nonsense speech full of this red light, but also purifying all the karmic imprints from past speech before it ripens, all this, completely purifying all of it, full of this radiant red light. Om tare to tare to re so, 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 om tare to tare to re so. Again, Lama Tara sends so compassionately these radiant red beams of light that fill us completely, this time the most powerful one, enabling us to only benefit others. Even just saying good morning to somebody, it benefits whoever hears it. This is called the power of speech, and we need this. We need our speech to be powerful, to fulfill our wishes, to get things done, to help people. We need the powerful speech. So imagine this. So any sound we utter now can only benefit whoever hears us. How amazing. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. Om tare tu tare tu re swaha. Om tare tu tare tu re so, tare tu tare tu re so, om tare tu tare tu re so. Om tare tu tare tu re so, om tare tu tare tu re so, om tare tu tare tu re so.
Humtare Tatare Ture Swaha. Full of this red light, full of this marvelous potential to be a benefit to others with our speech. How amazing. Now, Lama Tara so kindly sends radiant beams of blue light, blue light the sky from her heart in the center of her chest. Powerful laser beams enter our chest and fill us completely, totally fill us with this radiant blue light, purifying all the rubbish of our mind, all the fears and the drama and the self-centeredness and the confusion and the anger and the despair, all the stuff that drags us down and prevents us from benefiting others and causes us to even harm others. All of this totally eradicated, full of this blissful blue light. Om tare to tare ture so ham tare to tare ture so ham tare to tare ture so Om tare to tare ture so ham tare to tare ture so Om Tare Jatare Ture Swaha. Again, Lama Tara sends these radiant beams of blue light. Fill us completely. And this time with what? Well, this is the amazing point. You know, the Buddhist view of the mind is so incredible if we think about it. That all these delusions, all these fears and limitations, all the voices of ego that cause us to suffer and cause us to harm others are not at the core of our being. There's something pretty incredible, really. I mean, the modern psychology, that's laughable. We say that attachment and anger and depression are normal parts of a normal person and that you'd be weird if you didn't have them. Buddha views is different. We've got to think about this because it's quite different, radically different, but very encouraging if we can think about it. So imagine, you know, this blue light filling us. Now with what? Now the delusions have all gone. We only have wisdom. We only have clarity. We only have kindness, compassion, generosity, forgiveness, all these marvelous qualities that are at the core of our being. And of course, the bonus is that our mind is also blissful. This is kind of a very fascinating point. You know, miserable feelings, unhappy feelings, because they are because we have attachment and anger and despair and jealousy. When they've gone, there's no misery left. This is a very quite shocking concept. So try and imagine the bonus is that your mind is radiant and clear and blissful. Full of all this, this marvelous potential. Every one of us. Om tare to tare to this one, om tare to tare to this one, om tare to tare to this one. It's radiant blue light filling us. Om tare to tare to this one, om tare to tare to this one. Om tare to tare to this So now imagine that the, the lotus is the lotus that Lama Tara is sitting on and the little lotus that her right foot is resting on just dissolve up into her body, dissolve into light up into her body. Mm. 
And she very happily imagines she happily comes and sits above our crown, facing the same way as us. And then she very happily dissolves into light and absorbs through our crown. And we imagine that the energy of the body, speech, and mind, of enlightened energy of body, speech, and mind of Tara, the Buddha, in enlightened energy of our Lama, merge with our enlightened, with our body, speech, and mind. It comes the same thing. This is me. This is who I am. And now without any thoughts, just kind of imagine you expand this goodness and wisdom and clarity, this, you know, ex you expand to fill the universe. Completely radiant, clear, blissful, vast, infinite wisdom, infinite compassion. No thoughts for a few minutes. Just abide in this vastness. No thoughts. And then now, just now, now think. Well, I'm, I've now become a completely enlightened Buddha. But what about sentient beings? You know, what am I going to do now? I better help them. So imagine now, all the sentient beings pervading space. Think of all the beings, all in the form of humans, pervading space in front of you, behind you, above you, below you. All the suffering sentient beings, all in the form of humans. And they're all the same as you. They all want happiness. They all don't want suffering. And they've all got the potential. So imagine now billions of little tiny Taras come out from your heart. Billions of tiny green Taras go out, emanate out, enter into all the hearts of all the beings of the universe, totally taking away their suffering, completely giving them all their happiness, everything they need, and turning them into their own Tara, their own Buddha. Imagine this. Wanting this. Om tare to tare to resva, om tare to tare to resva. I'm tired to tell you to do I'm tired to tell you to do So all these Tara, they all turn into Tara now, and they all come from all directions and all absorb into us. All of them, these little green Tara, they all turn into Tara. So they all absorb into us, enhancing even more brilliantly our own Tara nature, our own goodness, our own wisdom, our own power. Imagine. And then we just, then we think, then we stop. That's it, just... You know, 20 minutes maybe we thought these thoughts, and because no thoughts go astray, these have gone into our mind, you know, because every thought counts, everything exists on the tip of the wish. And be delighted we've done these few thoughts, you know, it's creating the cause for us to become exactly like this. Be delighted. That's it, people. Gone like a dream. Three seconds later, it's 30 minutes later. Goes quick, doesn't it? That's it, honeys.